Hello, Chris McMeeking uh, with DQ here, and I'm talking to you today about accessibility testing for developers, uh, a new process that I've seen in iOS 13 uh, that makes accessibility testing much easier for developers. We need to do accessibility testing. It has to happen, but it doesn't have to be difficult. So accessibility testing is important. We want to accessibility test early and often. Accessibility defects represent risk to an organization. Uh, the earlier a defect is caught, the cheaper it is to fix. We do not want defects working their way too far down a process. It takes and involves more individuals and takes developers farther away from the line of code that they are fixing when they need to fix it. Every time a developer has to go back reintegrate into that code base, it's expensive for them. And the nice thing about this is we don't have to be perfect to be effective. Every bug that we catch earlier in that process saves us money. Development is hard. A developer should want to maximize their time actually writing code. That is what they are good at. That is what they specialize in. And that is the one thing that they are uniquely suited to accomplish. So we should want this as well. Developers have a lot of their plate already and will rightfully push back against further expectations. Anything you add onto a developer's plate, they will be hesitant to adopt because they know that they need to continue writing code, remaining a efficient at this is their job. And most manual accessibility testing processes are time consuming. Any manual accessibility testing process that you ask a developer to do is going to distract from that thing that they are good at writing code. The problem is voiceover testing in development is very slow. Uh, voiceover testing is a slow process with a thoughtful analysis of an individual screen taking 15 minutes or more, right? This is something that we do not want developers to do. Even the act of turning on voiceover is expensive in developer years, right? If, if just going onto a screen and doing anything more than glancing at it is an expensive thing for a developer and in a process where developers want things to cost them seconds, Turning on voiceover costs minutes. This is an expensive thing and a distraction from what they should be doing, which is writing code. Um, and, and not only that, but there's a question of whether this is a valuable thing to have them do. Voiceover testing is difficult and requires nuanced expertise that not very many developers have. We want to keep developers doing the things that they are good at and our accessibility experts doing the things that they are good at, right? Um, so how do we marry these two things? How do we take accessibility and development and combine them together in a way that allows us to catch these defects early uh, without uh, asking our experts in their various levels of expertise to do things that uh, they shouldn't be doing? And that is what we are talking about. And the solution is voice control testing. Uh, this is new in iOS 13. Um, I've got a little screenshot over here. This is just beautiful. In one glance, we get rudimentary coverage of all four WCAG 2.0 categories of accessibility issues, perceivability, Look, I can tell voice control and other accessibility uh, applications know that all of these things are there. Understandability, I can see the descriptions of all of them. Operability, if voice control knows that those things are there, they will be operable in voice control, switch control, and voiceover. And robustness, one of the things that voiceover uh, testing suffers from is that everything is focused in voice control or, or in voiceover, but voice control only will put these gray boxes on operable things. So we know if we see these gray boxes over things, we know that it is not only accessible in voice control, but we can also conclude that it will also be accessible in voiceover. Question, how do we do it, right? So let me show you how this works. Uh, so I have, this is now not a screenshot anymore, but I'm casting my device. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on voice control. I'm going to click on this little settings icon here. I'm going to find, oh, I'm already at the accessibility. But if you come down here, new in iOS 13, they've kind of reorganized uh, their settings area here. Um, and 
So you'll see that we go in and accessibility now has its own little category. So we go to accessibility and now we're going to find voice control. It's just a little down the list, physical and motor under the heading physical and motor. We're going to find voice control and turn it on, right? Um, now that this is on, see we get this nice gray overlay. We're gonna pop it away and we're gonna find the view that we wanna test. I like testing the App Store uh, for testing this stuff out. There's a lot going on. Basically, all we are looking for is that there are these gray boxes over all of our actionable controls, right? That's all we need. Just the presence of these gray boxes tell me a ton about the accessibility of my application. Just from this, just from this image alone and glancing at this image, which once you get used to takes you about a second, <laughs> um, I can tell that all of my actionable controls are going to be accessible in voice control, switch control, and if I look at the text on those actionable controls, I can also see that voiceover, they're gonna be actionable in voiceover as well, and that they have reasonable descriptions. This is super, super powerful. I can, as a developer, set a phone to my side. I don't even have to touch the phone. I just go through my standard process. It, it doesn't even, once I start interacting with this, notice these things go away, right? As a developer, um, it doesn't affect any of the way that I use my device. It's just there, I can leave this on all the time, and then all I have to do is pause, wait for those little gray boxes to show up, and I get an awesome view of how accessible my application is for the amount of time I've spent to do it. Again, all you have to do is wait that one or two seconds for those views to show back up, and you're good. Crazy, crazy cool. Benefits of voice control testing can be left on without disrupting standard device usage. Significant coverage with just a glance. Seriously, in one second, you learn a ton and no disruption to a developer's workflow. That is pretty much all I have on that. Here's a list of useful voice control commands to reference. Um, I will really, really point out this show me what to say, the show me what to say thing's really cool, but this is how uh, these are some commands that you could try um, in voice control, and that is all I have. Thank you, everybody.